Well, thank you, Glenn. And now joining us to help understand the regulatory side of what's going on is Dr. Rod Hall. Dr. Hall, help us understand the exact, what is the details of this regulation? The main part of the regulation is that uh, bulls changing ownership within the state of Oklahoma beginning January the 1st, 2011 will be required to be tested for trichomoniasis. Uh, there are exceptions to that test requirement. Young bulls, such as these out here, uh, will, will be able to be sold without a test, providing that uh, they have not been exposed to breeding females uh, until, since they were weaned. Uh, if they're going directly to slaughter, they will not have to be tested. Right. But uh, basically any bull that's going to be used for breeding that cannot be certified as a virgin bull mm -hmm. will need to be tested negative for this disease uh, before he can actually change ownership. All right, now you're saying tested. What kind of test are we talking about here? Well, there are two tests that are commonly used. The, uh, the older test is called a culture test. And uh, basically it's just a, the sample is put into a culture media and it's looked at under a microscope for the organisms themselves. It uh, takes longer to do. It's not nearly as uh, not nearly as precise mm -hmm. as the other test, which is called a PCR. Okay. With the PCR test, we're actually checking for the DNA of the organism that causes this disease. So it's uh, on, on one test, the the PCR is is more effective than the culture. It's quicker. Uh, we have less false uh, positives with the PCR. So we will, for our regulatory purposes, we're going to accept one PCR test or three of the culture test. Okay. Now those tests start out exactly the same. The sample is, is collected exactly the same for both tests. So now for a producer, you go out, you get the test, it comes back positive, what's gonna happen with the animal? What are your options? Well, as, as Dr. Stepp explained, there, there is no treatment for a bull that's infected with this. So uh, we are going to require, and, and, and this is the same pretty much in all the states west of the Mississippi, uh, a bullet test positive is required to be sold directly for slaughter uh, or castrated uh, if, if he's young enough for that to be a viable option. Uh, we just, uh, these bulls once infected are infected for life and, and uh, the main point of it is to get rid of those infected bulls and, and uh, there, there just is no treatment so they have to be slaughtered. Let's talk about why. I mean, what is the concern for the industry? Why do we have to make this move? Well, this, uh, this disease has uh, been a problem out in the western part of the United States for a number of years now and actually has been here. I, I diagnosed it in my practice as early as 1978. So we have had it here, but it's gradually getting worse. And we just have a fear that uh, if we don't start doing something now, it's going to continue to get worse and, and become even more serious. We think that, uh, we think that around 3% of the bulls in Oklahoma are infected with this disease. Mm -hmm. And conservatively, if that's true, uh, conservatively, then it's costing Oklahoma cattle producers uh, over $5 million a year. As, uh, as a practicing veterinarian, my job was to work for my individual clients and, and try to help them have the most efficient cattle herd that I could. Now that I'm working for the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, my job is to work for the entire cattle industry in mm -hmm. Oklahoma. So I feel like if, if we can save them two or three million dollars at least, uh, then I'm, I'm doing my job. Very good. All right, thank you for joining us today. If you'd like more information on, this, on these regulations and on the new procedures, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu, click on show links.